Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the Aimpoint T2 Optic. The T2 is the successor to the Aimpoint T1. Now I've reviewed the T1 here previously and uh, I made the bold statement that the T1 is the best red dot optic on planet Earth. Uh, there's several reasons for that. The T1 as well as the T2 really are just bomb proof. If you guys watched Larry Vickers uh, torture test where they blew that thing up, they dropped it, they buried it, they did all kinds of stuff to it. And the optic just kept ticking. I mean, it was really, it was insane to watch. It's something that none of us would ever do. And the thing just kept on running. Now, my experience with aim points mirrors that. Aim points are super rugged, super reliable optics. And the T2 so far has been exactly that. It's been awesome. Now, the T2 has some features that uh, basically some of the T1 folks were asking for. They're asking for certainly the flip covers and a few other things that we're gonna get into uh, here coming up next in the review. Basic operation of the sight starts with the brightness knob here on zero. The optic is off, and your first four settings will be uh, night vision compatible. So if you're running like a PPS 14, you're going to want to use one of those settings. After that, we get into the daylight compatible modes, which is 5 through 12. Most folks in most lighting conditions are going to find somewhere between the 7 and 9 setting to be sort of optimal. And in those daylight say, settings, uh, you're going to get 50,000 hours of battery life, which is roughly five years, which is just awesome. So you can just turn your uh, T2 on, leave it on, and never have to worry about it again. Never have to worry about in you know the heat of the night or when you wake up, if you will, having to turn it on. It's always on, always ready when you need it. Another nice thing about these micro sights is that there's so many mounts available for them. This one here is from Scalarworks. It's a nice quick detach mount. You sort of uh, just tighten down with your fingers, pops right off. But they make uh, mounts for anything. Lower one-third, absolute co-witness. You can also find mounts out there that'll be low-rise mounts if you want to run it like on an Ultimac on your AK. They make pistol sight mounts. They make all kinds of different mounts for these. So really the sky's the limit in terms of how you want to mount these on whatever gun that you're actually going to use it on. It has a 2MOA dot and it's parallax free beyond 50 meters. They claim that it's parallax free in general, but all optics are going to have some parallax, at least at close distances, but generally less than an inch, so most folks will never notice it anyway. But um, it is made of extruded aluminum, the housing is. And uh, here on the bottom, one of the differences between this and the T1 is that it does have the helicoils, so that way you don't have to worry about stripping a screw into the aluminum housing itself. It's going to give you some protection against that, which is always nice. One thing that's nice about this is that it has that small 2MOA dot, so uh, it's very crisp. Even right now, we have it set on 9, just because it's sort of, sort of bright out here. It's sort of like hazy bright, if you know what I mean. And uh, even at that setting, it's very crisp, and you can reach out at distance should you need to do so. Zeroing the optic is done by removing your caps here for windage and elevation. Uh, it should be noted while we're taking these off that the top here is changed from the T1 that we have here. So the body of the site itself, now we have this aluminum piece built in to protect your uh, elevation adjustment, which isn't present on the T1. Some folks thought that might be a vulnerable spot. So Aimpoint went ahead and built the aluminum housing right around it to protect it. Now each click on your windage and elevation is good for a half MOA adjustment. So that's how you calculate it when you're actually dialing it in and it does tell you which direction you're turning it when you do so. The caps themselves are used to dial that in. So you just take these two little dots here, put it in, and then zero, 
as needed. And you can hear there is very positive clicks. You definitely know when you actually move it. It's not sloppy like some of the red dots out there are, so that's certainly a good thing. And uh, while we're putting it back on, I should note that they are O-ring sealed as well, these turrets. So that way it helps with the water submersibility. The optic itself is submersible down to 80 feet, so pretty intense stuff. Most folks are really going to be more worried about using it out there in the rain, and uh, for that you'll be just fine if you can submerge it down to 80 feet. The T2, unlike the T1, comes with these built-in flip caps. The flip caps there are clear, which allow you to leave it covered and actually still use it. Of course, you're going to have some distortion in your dot if you do that, but it will still remain zeroed and centered, so it's perfectly usable to do so. Uh, here on the T1, you have these bikini caps, which just suck. They get lost. They break. Uh, it was definitely one of the weak points of the T1 for sure. One thing to keep in mind though is if you're going to be using these uh, flip caps, make sure you leave enough room if you're going to use a magnifier um, because obviously they need room to be able to work. In addition to the differences we've already covered, there's a couple others that I'm not sure if they're going to come across all that well here on camera. Um, when I look through the T1, something I honestly never noticed until I got the T2 is that the T1 has a slight blue tint to it, and that's due to the uh, multi-coated optics and lenses, I should say, that they have on there. Now, these this has it as well, but the coatings are just a little bit better. In this one, the hue is pretty much gone, and uh, you can't see it at all, so it looks almost identical to what you're seeing, say, if you're firing with both eyes open. Uh, both eyes are pretty much seeing the same color and contrast the contrast on the t2 uh, as well as a little bit crisper so that's certainly nice um, a big difference though of between the t1 and the t2 and both of mine are two moa dots um, the t2 is going to have a crisper dot now you can kind of see it uh, with your naked eye if you're not using a magnifier but i went ahead and put a, a uh, magnifier behind it we use the eotech which is very crisp uh, magnifier we put that one behind it and these pictures that i'm going to roll in will probably explain it better than anything else that I can uh, say here, if you will. So on the T1, there's a slight sort of a uh, line to it. Uh, the dot is not exactly uh, centered in terms of being circular. It's sort of a slash. On the T2, it's not. It's super crisp and it is circular, completely circular. So that's certainly a uh, very nice thing when you're trying to get precise shots with a magnifier. I know a lot of folks are running three to five power magnifiers out there and you're definitely gonna see a difference there. Now, uh, other differences, the big one is gonna be price, right? So the T2, generally speaking, as of right now when I'm recording this video anyway, is gonna be 70, 50 to 70 dollars more expensive just for the basic site. Now, if you look at some of the packages out there, that's gonna vary, but generally speaking, the T2, at least when I checked on Amazon as of this morning, and I'll post links below so you guys can check out these uh, deals I'm talking about, was gonna be somewhere between 730 and 750. Now, that's very expensive for a red dot optic, without question, it is, but uh, the lightweight. Uh, option of this, the ruggedness of it, the sight quality in terms of clearness, and the ability to just leave it on, set it, and forget it, if you will, uh, make the T1 and the T2 now uh, really, like I said, just sort of the best optics out there in terms of red dots. They're just, I mean, there's nothing in their class, in my opinion. Now, certainly the Comp 4s are very good, the Aimpoint Pros, but, you know, obviously they're a larger weight than these. So if you're looking for a lightweight aim point uh if you're buying new in my opinion i'd probably get the t2 you know if you're looking for something new and you can get a good deal on the t1 hey t1s are still great but the t2 definitely has some upgrades that i think are uh, worth looking into if you guys have any questions about this or anything else here in the video you can always post below in the comment section you can also post over at my facebook page as always but thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing and i hope to see you in the next video